don't claim to know a lot about humanity, but what seems fairly self-evident is that people enjoy stacking things on top of other things, uh, as evident by Stonehenge, the pyramids, uh, modern-day buildings. I mean, we've got machines now that are specifically made to stack things on top of other things. So yeah, I would say people enjoy... There's something about stacking things on top of things that, you know, is kind of cool to people. Uh, but that's not just me. Iron Hippo Games also bets on that because their, uh, their upcoming game, Tournament of Towers, is all about stacking. So the premise, the, the story for Tournament of Towers is almost like it's, it's an extra chapter or an extra section of the Phantom Tollbooth. You're in the land of Geometra and the, the king and queen are, are putting on a tournament uh, and basically the whole tournament is build the best tower. And so you've got all these geometrical shapes, you're an architect and you have to build not only the tallest but the most impressive because the taller your tower is the more points you get but also the more difficult pieces you use in it you get more points for that as well. Briefly how the game works is uh, there's a deck of cards everybody gets seven cards and you draft so you take one card hand your hand over to the person on your left and you go in a circle and you continue this until everybody's got a hand of seven cards. So when you get your seven cards those are the seven pieces you're going to be using in the first round. It's not a free-for-all, grab whatever you need to build the tallest tower. You've got seven specific pieces each round, and there's, there's two rounds in the game. So the first round, you've got your seven pieces. And then, just to throw things and make things a little bit more interesting, you have to organize them which block you're going to place first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So you can't just sort of, you know, work something out and put a piece here and then find the best piece in the next. You have to sit there and you have to think. You have to visualize your your tower in your mind before you begin building. So then you lay out all the cards and you go. Uh, there's another, there's an optional rule and this is something that I don't necessarily play with all the time. It, it adds a little bit of variety but especially for first games I kind of leave it out. Uh, but there's, a, it comes with a die and each round you can roll that and whatever, depending on what number shows up, you take a specific action that could be move all your difficult pieces to the end of your build order. It could be that you're swapping pieces with someone that could make other pieces worth more points at the end of the game. Uh, it adds a little bit of variety, so that's what you do. Uh, and again, that is an optional part of the game. And after you place your first seven pieces, you then have your little architect character, and he's worth an extra point, and you put him somewhere on your building. After that, you do the exact same drafting phase again, put everything in order, roll the action die if you're playing that way, and then uh, build up, and then place your little architect higher than he was before. After two rounds, you score, well, you score after each round, but whoever has the most points uh, without pieces falling off. You get one mulligan in this, uh, but you score points, whoever has the most points wins. It's fairly straightforward. I want to tell you, I mean, this seems like a really basic game, but I want to tell you why this works so well, and, and honestly, why I enjoyed this game so much. I want to let you know right now that the components, these are all prototypes, and, and for a prototype, they're fantastic, but I'm told the, the fi finished pieces are going to be much, much nicer. Taking a cursory look at each of these building blocks, they look like they're difficult to work with, and they are, especially the yellow pieces. Um, the way the scoring works, after each round, whoever has the tallest tower gets three points, uh, and then every round you score any amount of yellow pieces that you have on your tower are one point as well. So you want to put these, these yellow pieces on because they're essentially bonus points that score both rounds, uh, but they're very difficult to work with. And just taking a look at, at the pieces, it looks like they can't work so well with the other pieces. And that was a major concern before I played the game. After playing a few rounds, I quickly realized there are players much more creative than I am uh, that made these pieces work together in ways that I had not thought of. So there, there was a lot of thought that went into the shapes of every single one of these pieces. And, and I think that that is a huge deal. Now, stacking things on top of each other is a little bit of a game, but with that drafting mechanic, uh, with the fact that you are deciding which cards you're going to be taking, you've got, you know, you know what the other pieces are available to the other players, you mix that in with the um, having to decide the build order for each round, and then keeping in mind that you have a second round where you have to add seven more pieces to your already rickety tower, it makes it much more interesting than just taking pieces and stacking them together because all of a sudden, this becomes a very competitive game where you're you're half competing with the other players. You're also half competing just trying to make a tower that's going to stay standing so you can maybe get the bonus points. And that may mean having the shorter tower on the first round, but just making it so that you can stay alive. 
because you can work yourself into a corner in the first round. If you build really poorly, how are you going to build, add seven more pieces to your, your tower? Uh, and when you're building the tower, you only have this as your base. This is the, you, you can't build on the table itself. You have to use this as your base. Every block that you have has to rest on this tiny little rectangle. So this is the kind of game that if you know you like dexterity games or stacking games specifically, I would highly recommend checking this game out. I mean, even if you don't, this is the type of game that might get you into something like that. It's an absolute blast to play with other people, especially, you know, you've got that tension when you're, you're placing the final piece and your, your tower's moving with every breath. Um, if you don't like this type of game, it's worth taking a look at, but just know that this is that type of dexterity game. It's a stacking game. If you already know you don't like that kind of game, you might not be that interested in this. For me, this is a, a big plus. I mean, I, I really, really enjoyed this game. I think it was a lot of fun. It's fun watching other people play. It's fun and nerve-wracking placing the pieces yourself. Um, if I were to go any cons, um, the mulligan rule, sometimes it is difficult. It's a bummer if your tower falls and you're, you know, disqualified from the game. But it's a quick game. It plays in about, I mean, you can play this game in 10, 15 minutes and be up and running. We played last night. We played three times in a row and it was, uh, wasn't bad at all. The event die adds a level of randomness and chaos to an already pretty difficult game, which is why I don't normally play with that rule. Uh, it's completely optional though, so that's, um, if you don't like that, don't play with it. If you want to try something a little bit different, throw that rule into the game. Uh, so, so for me, this game works on a ton of levels. It's fun. The theme is, yeah, it, the theme's there. I mean, Geometra, it, it does feel like it's straight out of the Phantom Toll booth. Uh, but the art is super cute, I guess. I mean, that it goes really well with the theme. And the artwork uh, is, you know, all these geometrical shapes. Even the people are, are you know, sort of blocky that way. Um, I think this is a winner. I think we, I think Iron Hippo Games really has something on their hands that could be uh, something that could stand out, especially in this type of genre, where there, there really aren't that many stacking games. I think the implementation of the drafting and the turn and the build order makes this a solid game, uh, a fun activity and a really solid uh, strategic game. This is a game that I can safely recommend. I'm going to definitely check it out when it comes goes live on Kickstarter. Highly recommend you do as well. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.